This is Tom Bernacki, and today I am here to talk about bromosis. What does that mean? Ugh. Stinky, smelly feet. That's the guide today. I'm gonna show you what you can do at home today to get rid of stinky, smelly feet and shoes. So that's a fancy word, bromosis. What does that mean? That basically means stinky, smelly feet. Uh, that's the fancy medical term. Are stinky, smelly feet dangerous? Generally not, unless you're a diabetic, unless you have health conditions. The causes are never your skin. That's the mistake people make. People think they're cursed with this. It's just sweat management. The only thing that causes that terrible cheese vinegar like odor that uh, scares people off from you is bacteria and fungus and the digestive products they make. So basically bacteria eat your sweat and then they poop it out all over your skin and that's what you're living with. So congratulations, you or your significant other are covered by bacterial poop and that's what causes that smell. So that is great news. That means you're not the one that smells. So pick up that self-esteem, feel good about yourself because we here uh, want to make you feel good about your non-smelly feet and not having poop on your skin. That is the goal of this channel, to not feel like you're covered in poop. In your foot, you wanna get in there with the soap. You wanna clean out in between the toes. You don't just wanna clean the top of the foot and the bottom of the foot. You want to get in between the toes and clean out all the toes. Get yourself a good antibiotic, antibacterial soap. There's the liquid soaps for sale as well, and we link some in our product store as well. You can check that out. And foot soaks, you can do that for 10, 15 minutes. There's specific antifungal, antibiotic foot soaks that clean out in between your toes. Number two is this. Most people I see with foot fungus, with athlete's foot, with smelly, stinky feet, have lots of dry skin. So you have dry skin at the bottom of your foot and you have excessive sweat. So what you wanna do is when you're taking this foot bath and shower and soaking your feet, you want to grab a pumice stone. So with that pumice stone, you wanna scrub the bottom of your feet. As you're scrubbing the bottom of your feet, all that dead, dry skin comes out. There's a disclaimer, disclaimer alert. I'm still holding this smelly shoe in this example, but the disclaimer here is you do not want to scrub your skin raw. Some people overdo this as well, especially if you're diabetic, especially if you're a smoker, especially if you have blood flow disease, you don't want to overdo it, but get rid of that dead dry skin because that's what fungus and bacteria, that's what fungus and bacteria live on. So you want to get rid of all that dead dry skin. You also want to clip your toenails. You don't want a thick, dry toenail. That's where nail fungus lives. The only portion of your nail that should be left on your foot is the portions that are actually getting blood flow. So that means only the portions that if you cut them, they would bleed. So get rid of the dry skin, exfoliate it, scrub it with antimicrobial soap, get all that dead dry skin off of. This is where fungus and bacteria live on. These are the absolute keys. If you can do these, you are already going to an experience, a significant improvement. Home remedy time, still holding the shoe, still holding the smelly shoe, it's probably making me smell, uh, getting all that bacterial poop on me. But here is what the foot soaks do. Are they as good as taking a shower and scrubbing your foot with my antimicrobial soap? Yeah, they basically do the same thing. There's no real studies, so we just have to take people's word on them. But there's a lot of different types of soaks. You have a Listerine soak, so Listerine is great. You have uh, Epsom salt soaks. You have tea, so taking tea bags and putting them into the foot soak. And then you have apple cider vinegar. I'd say personally for me, vinegar is readily available, but um, it kind of smells itself. So I always keep it safe with Epsom salts. What are the goal of these soaks? The goal of the soak is to fill up a tub 
with about three quarters warm water and about one quarter of all these substances. So Listerine, Epsom salts, uh, tea bags, you can add like four or five. Obviously you can't fill it up with one quarter tea bags. That's a, that would use up like the whole pack. And then uh, apple cider vinegar. Don't overdo it. Don't use stuff like bleach. That can burn your skin. I've had some people use bleach. I had a diabetic use bleach and it ate all the way through his skin. So be safe. Don't do that kind of stuff. Um, all this stuff does is exfoliate your skin. Dead dry skin swells up. It's all the surface bacteria get killed by this apple cider vinegar, the Listerine. These are all toxic substances to, to bacteria so and fungus. So you can definitely use them to kill the fungus and bacteria and get them feeling a whole lot better very, very quickly. Those things work great in exfoliating your skin and killing the bacteria. So you definitely wanna take advantage of the home remedies. You can also, some other home remedies, you can take scented flakes and stuff and put them in your shoe, but we're actually solving your problem, not just teaching you how to stuff your shoe full of crap. So uh, I know that's a great home remedy that somebody used, so excuse my uh, use another word, crap. We're gonna talk about socks. The tricky thing about this is, People think doctors have a study, a validated answer to everything. Nobody studies which socks are the best. We use common sense and that's how we make our decisions. But basically, the more breathable a sock is, the less occlusive the sock is, the better it's gonna get the sweat out of there. So take a look at these thin socks right here. These are actually pretty good. There's, I don't know if you can see right here. This is an older sock here, but see that meshy material? that's gonna get a lot of sweat out of there. The, the general thought process is very thick socks like wool, especially in the winter, they will wick a lot of that sweat out of there. Uh, so if you use more breathable socks is the bottom line. Ideally, um, you wanna change them very regularly because your socks can start to smell too, as everybody well knows, because bacteria builds up in there and fungus builds up in there with all that dead dry sweat that can last for very long periods of time. So if for example, you're going on a nice date with a girl you just met or a handsome gentleman, you want to wear a nice clean pair of shoes and a nice pair of socks. You don't want to potentially have to take off your socks and shoes the first time and have terrible foot odor. Everybody knows this. This is not something you thought you'd be getting today, but I'm giving you great dating advice too. This could salvage your date. Wear a new pair of socks, wear a great shoe. <laughs> so get a more breathable sock. Don't get a cheap, occlusive sock. Um, get something that's specifically marketed as a runner's sock or a wool kind of breathable sock. So Smart Wool PhD, uh, that's a great sock, especially for the winter. These are top of the line socks. So spend a couple extra bucks, get good socks, get that breathable material. The same concept holds true for shoes. People with cowboy boots, I'm still holding these socks, but cowboy boots are occlusive. Leather men's shoes are occlusive. Running shoes are not that occlusive. Look at the mesh here. The mesh is everywhere. The more mesh you have in your shoe, the more the sweat will get out of there. That's not to say it's a foolproof plan. You could still have a pretty sweaty shoe that smells. So you want to get a, as breathable of the shoe as possible. Uh, same kind of thing. You can get orthotics right here. There's ones with our activated charcoal. You can get it with built-in material, but I wouldn't recommend wasting money on built-in materials in your shoe. That's a huge waste of money. You can just grab the sprays and spray them. We talked about cleaning your feet properly. We talked about exfoliating. So exfoliate that dead dry skin after a foot bath or shower. We talked about good breathable shoes. We talked about good breathable socks. Make sure you're switching up your socks and your shoes. Don't keep wearing the same stuff every single day. So switch up your socks and shoes every day. Um, wash them. Antiperspirants for your feet. This is the exact same as an antiperspirant for your armpits. You don't wanna go with a deodorant. A deodorant just masks the smell. So your Axe Body Spray Bros, don't start spraying your feet. Uh, the sprays 
need to be an antiperspirant. The aluminum uh, compound within antiperspirants, there's two ways to apply it for feet and they cost about $5. They're not expensive. This is non-prescription stuff. You want to go get certain brands at your local pharmacy or you could order it. Check out our store in the links below. But you can get this type of spray or roll-on powder and what this will do is this will stop you from sweating as much. So in the morning or the night before you can apply it and this will really lower your sweating. If you're sweating less um, because of the antiperspirant and you have good socks and good shoes, you really, really uh, minimize the amount of sweat and the amount of bacteria and fungus living on your skin, especially if you've now gotten rid of the dead dry skin as well. So check out either the roll-on or the spray antiperspirants. If your shoes and your feet already smell, they're sprays and powders. So these sprays and powders are very cheap. You can get a three pack online for like 10, 15 bucks. These things are outstanding. So uh, I've had even the most resistant cases, like I'm talking patients who have been shunned by society. Uh, their kids have left them. Their own mother did not even want to talk to one of my patients because their feet smelled so bad. Once they start doing all these things and getting the powders and the sprays on there, these start going away. So make sure to spray your shoes, your socks, uh, if you're having an issue. The more you do this at the beginning, the better it will take care of this smell for you. The powders are great for drying out sweat. The spray you wanna do before you even get into the shoe, you don't wanna make it too moist in there because then you could develop a blister or something. The sprays and the powders work amazing. That's the stuff you could do at home. This is pretty much a guaranteed guide. I have had the smelliest feet that I have ever seen in the office. Uh, I'm talking horrible, horrible odor, get better almost immediately. It's not immediate, but by switching up your socks, your shoes, that will go away very quickly. Think about it just like showering. You clean off the layers, you scrub it very nice, you get rid of all that dead dry skin and nail that all that fungus and bacteria lives on. Once you get rid of all that stuff and it slowly starts to give less of a home for that all to live, you then start spraying your shoes. Do you have good socks and shoes where this can't live on? Your problem is solved. So personally for me, it is, and you could tell I'm low energy today, 4.30 a.m. I'm waking up before clinic day of almost 40 patients and one surgery to bring you this stinky, smelly feet guide. That's how important this guide is to me. I don't want you to live with bacterial poop all over your skin causing odor. I want you to be free of that. So subscribe if you appreciate me waking up at 4.30 a.m. If you, if you don't want me to get any sleep, don't subscribe.